Okay, so now let's take the third topic here, astrophotometry, and how does that work? So, uh, one of the things I'd like to, one of the threads I'd like to weave through the whole discussion here is the fact that these techniques all lean on each other and, and get built up over time. So, uh, once, you know, once you had these two validated techniques that we're, we're seeing by this point, you know, thousands of stars through the Kepler mission, you know, we're starting to log up and be observed, uh, people in the meantime also began to develop other techniques. And one of the less obvious but more direct techniques might be if you've, if you've been paying attention or did you, if you've understood the idea that a, a planet th in causes motion in the star, you might think, like we've been observing stellar motions, proper motions for, for, for about a century or so, so that you might think it might have been possible to actually see a star move around in a little circle. And in fact, that's the spirit of what astrophotometry is, is you simply, oh. as, the, as, the st as the planet orbits around, the star gets pulled this way, then this way, and, and over time it exerts a small circle. So if this is your star, what you'll see over time is, you'll, thanks Bern, you'll see it, uh, you'll see it execute a little circle. So the star is actually moving now. It's actually moving uh, in your field of view. And this is something we can observe. That's correct. It does take, it's a little more difficult to do it, but it's not as hard as actually seeing the planet itself. Because this, this star, you know, in some cases, they move a fair bit. And because the, the, the center, in the end, all you have to really see is just enough that you see that the center of this is moving. I mean, I may be exaggerating the size of the circle compared to the star. It might be that the star is just okay. moving around like this, but it's enough to detect. But to clarify, uh, the Doppler technique was the star was moving as well, but there we were detecting the uh, absorption lines of hydrogen. Or That's or right, the movement in, uh, in, in the in frequency in space. Space, whereas here we're directly detecting the motion of the star Correct. itself. That's right. And that's doable. Now, the, the, the thing that really needs to be said about this method that's important is, whereas these two methods relied on being observers in this plane, Mm -hmm. right, where the planet is crossing in front of the star in some way. This technique actually works when you're only works when you're observing this oh, way. It's the other way around. Actually, yeah. it works for both, to tell you the truth, actually, because you'll see the star oscillating. Oh, oscillating. Yeah. So it, you don't have that bias, which is important, because you, know, you always wonder about, about that, if that's affecting what you're seeing. So it's not as, uh, the, like, less than, you know, only a... Uh, maybe 10% or something, only a small percentage of the stars are observed this way, but it is one of the important techniques. Okay, okay.